It is uh, 17 hours and 38 minutes into the day of uh, Thursday, October 6, 2016. Yes, and uh, uh, this morning, probably about 6 o'clock this morning, um, Hurricane Matthew uh, made landfall at, around, at, in uh, Florida. And what surprised me is the amount of panic that went on. Because you would have thought that with the no warnings that, that that were there, that people would have been better, oh, would have been better prepared, but uh, apparently not. Um, there seems to be issues with uh, how no forecast these things with their uh, with their model, and um, they miss weather events that they shouldn't miss. But anyways, that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm doing the work. I gotta, you know, get more of the details done. My office now, in for full working condition outside, I just now have to start improving the efficiency, the functionality, the productivity, the functionality, the productivity uh, of the office outside. Now it's uh, where my observation post is, uh, and begin building. Uh, uh, Cyborg Alpha TV Network. That's will be the, the goal. And uh, <laughs> it means a number of things are actually moving out of uh, BTS vlogs and into uh, uh, the sort of side channels where we can talk more specific about things. And, and this includes about uh, this whole issue of anti Semitism and stuff like that. Um, and it is that it goes along with the whole thing of hate speech now, that certain speech is now outlawed and and <laughs> watching uh, Alex Jones uh, talk about censorship on the internet, how YouTube is in, in particular with um, with the Hillary Hillary Clinton group that uh, the internet's being censored and it's being censored by these particular people the the uh, so-called, uh, well, they call the loony level. They're not. They are loony, but they uh, are also uh, quite. I would say criminal. They're they're psychopaths. And this is what I talked about before. I talk about psychopath society. You can go back to some of the earlier BTS blogs, and I'm talking about a psychopathic society. And this is what happens where most of the people on who are hillbots who support Hillary Clinton don't seem to understand what's going on. And their capacity to understand has also been diminished as well because uh, they just simply don't question what's going on because they're given information uh, uh, from the mainstream media and uh, and when they go around and say, okay, well, are there alternatives? Well, yeah, there are, but not really because a lot of people stand up and say, hey, I'm anti-establishment. And this is the whole issue here is about anti-establishment. Yeah, I'm anti-establishment. Uh, but are they really and truly anti-establishment? Or are they simply another perspective of the establishment? And as I sat down and had a couple of discussions with people on the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, and they help, they get over this whole thing that they talk, and this is even Michael Savage who says, who says, he says he's a, he's a, he supports the American ideal and so on and so forth, and 
uh, talks about how uh, you know Islamists is not a uh, religion of peace; it's a religion of war, and so on and so forth. But uh, one, all, all, I said before, one only needs to go back into history to see that the Roman Catholic Church itself had its uh, uh, its own uh, militancy. It had a whole period of well. Yeah, it had close to uh, seven, eight hundred years of militancy. I mean, if you want to consider all the way up to, but if you want to consider up to uh, the end of the uh, the conflict between the uh, Protestants and Catholics in Ireland, then the uh, you got a, you have a good nineteen hundred years plus, uh, uh, <laughs> close to two thousand years. Well, a thousand years uh, of vows of, of between the, the. Let me correct my dates here. Not two thousand. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine is kind of nineteen ninety nine. Close to two thousand is when the conflict between the uh, Catholics and the and the Protestants more was more or less resolved. In other words, the last few years. Uh, given that the uh, the papacy began at about a thousand A.D. and then. Within uh, about uh, uh, 1064, that's when you had the Battle of Hastings. That was the First Crusade, and it was uh, this is where the Normans uh, from Normandy were ordered by the papacy to go in and conquer um, England, uh, the United Kingdom, uh, and they weren't properly with. They decided not to go with Rome, and so. Rome promptly, as the papacy says, the, needs to force them into uh, proper Christianity. And they sent an army in, and they wiped out all the bishop, mo bishops, monks, and priests, all, all the clergy of the church, including the nuns, except for the one who was holding the particular staff of uh, a saint that they all revered, was uh, St. Augustine of uh, Canterbury. Uh, and there was a monk holding that one, so he was who held that staff, and he was the only one who wasn't uh, executed and murdered. Uh, they went about raising most of the churches. Most of the original churches of England are gone. <coughs> and this was uh, Roman Catholicism. All, one only needs to look into uh, the chapter of King David to understand where Judaism is coming from. And once you understand where Judaism is coming from, you go look at Leviticus, Look at the, the chapter of King David. And this is what's going on in modern day Israel is a belief in the fulfillment of King David and the reconstruction of King David in order to create an Israeli kingdom. This is what it's about in the Middle East. It's, and so for them, it is a religious um, <clears throat> endeavor. And they have obviously supported a heavy-handed approach, an iron fist, to security. I mean, this is you, you can see this in Israel. This is this is <clears throat> why Israel is so good at security. And so, if all one has to do is simply look into history to understand that it's not one group that provides is the sole uh, proprietor of all the problems of the world. There is a collection of people from a variety of different sides, each calling themselves establishment at some point in some degree, that there is a collective problem with society itself with, in terms of, uh, of how people view things. So it's not necessarily the fault of, well, not the fault of the individual who's stuck within the current mainstream society saying, you know, show me a way out when the old, the whole way out, you have a group say, oh yeah, I'm anti-establishment over here, but not really. I'm anti-establishment over here, but not really. You know, this is true for RT, this is true for Glenn Beck, this is true for Alex Jones, this is true for Michael Savage, all these people who claim to be anti-establishment or alternative media aren't. And it's, again, this goes back to the discussion of uh, of the co of copyrights. Oh, you have the free speech. You have free the free speech in the United States. Of course, you know free speech is is is, is uh, limited, really. 
the whole concept of free speech was limited. No, not really. The whole concept of free speech was to be free. Unlimited. Not restricted. And if you look back in history, that's exactly what's going on. Is they, the, it was the intention to release speech from its prisons. This is regardless of whether you agree with the speech or not. In other words, you can disagree with somebody's uh, uh, free speech, their, their, their ideas in terms of what they want to say, but defend the person's right to say it. And the thing is, this is completely missed in the discussion on free speech. And so what you have is you see uh, Michael Savage, Alex Jones, Glenn Beck, they all have copyrights. They're all using, they're all using the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. And this thing is very, is very unpatriotic because it is a major violation of the free speech. And they don't get it. They just don't get it. You see, you hear it in every, you know, in, the, in their, in, in their, in, in every, almost every broadcast when they talk about this whole thing, about, well, you know, how people should be rounded up and, you know, this is not <laughs> the, uh, go about doing things. You can't round people up. This is the whole bit. And this is what sort of gets Donald Trump in trouble because, yes, it's campaign rhetoric, but what happens is that a lot of the mainstream media, because they are on the left, and there's a good reason why they're on the left, uh, picks up this stuff and says, okay, this is what, this is what Trump is about. Here, he, he's saying this stuff. Without parsing and saying, well, this is campaign rhetoric. Campaign rhetoric is a lot like uh, the uh, Worldwide Wrestling Federation. If everyone was watching wrestling, knows that there's a lot of uh, empty talk and empty gesturing in, in, in wrestling, and that you really can't take it <clears throat> too seriously. But this is left out of the news broadcast. This parsing is left out. So it's presented as straight on as factual. When it's not factual, all they have to do is go into the history of politics and understand that a lot of the campaign trail uh, 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 is actually rhetoric. It's not real. It's, it, it, it's a, it, they're presenting an idea uh, and an idealism, a, a fantasy that's not going to happen. And I think it's the only way you choose your people you presidents, you choose your elected officials, but the person who's, who's um, actually, <laughs> bizarrely enough, who sound, who's less crazy. In this case, the less crazy is, and this is not saying much, is Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton has been proven to be pathological and psychological. You know, she, no, 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 uh, uh, She's a pathological liar, but she's also at the same time. Oh, the term has left my mind. She is the proprietor and victim of a society without conscience. There is no right, there's no wrong, there's no morality with this particular person. And the thing is, she does not, this is not her by herself. The lack of morality, the lack of empathy, the lack of feelings for others is common throughout the Hill bus, throughout the people who support Hillary Clinton. They have no mercy, they have no understanding of humanity. They're psychopaths, and this is the, the, the word has just come out. They're psychopathic. Hillary Clinton is both psychopathic and pathological at the same time. And the thing is, is that most of the society is like this. I'm just watching, you know, and this is what I'll be pointing out in INN's Tweet Lines, uh, Tweet Line Plus, is that how pathological the left is. How, 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 oh, I just left my mind again. How psychotic they are. And they they have no conscience. They don't understand when they're talking about ban you know ban you know the, how angry they get about banning abortion. Abortion is murder. You're killing an innocent child 
for your own particular issues. Yes, the girl was raped, but should an innocent child be killed because the, the uh, because the girl was raped? I mean, look historically. Look, I mean, look at historically what has gone, the horrors that have gone on. And the thing is, these horrors are still going on from both the left and the right. These horrors are still going on. Look at look at uh, Bill Hill, Hill, uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton's involvement with the with uh, uh, Emmanuel Epstein on, on the so-called so Orgy Island. We you know we, that, 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 that Bill Clinton has had a string of mistresses. And as one girl has pointed out to me, wow, Hillary Clinton has a right to be angry, has a right to destroy these women, including women who said they were been, had been raped by Bill Clinton. Because... Hell, hell hath never feel like, like a woman's scorn, right? So this is, Caroline, this is her excuse for Hillary Clinton. It doesn't matter that she killed four people in Benghazi. It doesn't matter the number of people she killed during the invasion of Libya when she overthrew Gaddafi just because they simply didn't, they wanted somebody else involved in there. She set the entire Middle East on fire. Look at the, 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 the policies, how her policies backfired with Arab Spring and what happened, the number of people killed during Arab Spring. This was the policies of Hillary Clinton, and nobody cares. Look at the number of Palestinians being killed. No one cares. Nobody cares that these people are being killed. But how could they care? How can a society who considers a, 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 an abortion of a baby no longer murder and it's fine and okay because you're just getting rid of a bit of biomass? This is, this is, a, this is a psychopathic society. They're psychopaths. And because they don't understand, they don't have the empathy that they should have for when somebody is hurt and dying. They have causes, but that's all they have. They, they have the concept. But look at this whole concept of, of their concept of anti-bullying. Is it really effective? I've talked to a lot of kids. And they're all saying the same thing. Anyone who's been bullied stays bullied. There are certain groups who are protected, but the average person, who every kid who gets bullied, nothing happens. The teachers are actually even involved in some of the bullying. So this is what society is. And it's all over. It doesn't matter where it's anti-establishment or, or whatever it is. So it's hard for people to leave. You know, where if you want if you want to be anti establishment you want to sort of leave the mainstream. Well, where do you go? Anyways, uh, this makes a better effort to vlog throughout the day today. Um, we'll do that again, and uh, we'll go on from there. All right, take it easy. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory L's BTS vlog. Right. It's uh, just about uh, four hours and seven minutes into the day of October, Friday, October 7th, uh, 2016. Uh, the outdoor office is working very well. Uh, I was able to get a good amount of work done. Uh, I'm out here again doing my observations. And things are progressing. <laughs> I do have a degree of process, progress. Um, uh, I think on a daily basis, as long as I make some degree of progress, that's good. Uh, that's certainly what's happening. And uh, I'm able to film out here. I'm able to organize some of the work that, you know, because in between events, there's, there's not always a lot to do in between events for things you're watching for. Like right now, I notice the humidity's up. That means that this, as the humidity comes in, the moisture comes in like this, that means there's probably going to be some rain in the future, uh, next couple of days. If the moisture level stays up, because in order to drop off the moisture level, uh, it, it either rains out or it moves off into another direction. So, uh, I knew I now have a new uh, view from the satellite that gives me a closer view that allows me to see what's going on more locally. So, uh, the satellite, you know, it, 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 you don't always know what information you're going to see from, from, from the satellite or how you're going to see it. So the question is, you know, what uh, views do you get? What what's out there? And then you go from there to sort of figure out, okay, 
Uh, this is how I can use a satellite for this. This is how I can use a satellite for that. And this is sort of what puts together your your observational tools. And in other words, this is the initial survey. I'm sort of looking around and seeing what can I use to under, to understand to, to study uh, atmospheric physics. And I was looking at the, the, the resources around me we, that that are out there and that are available. And bit by bit, starting to put together. Uh, something that's more comprehensive. So you go from the general, which is the general survey, and sometimes the general survey can take a fair bit of time because as you identify more chunks that, that need to be sort of worked on uh, in the general area, then you have to sort of sidestep and say, okay, yeah, I'm still doing general, but I gotta work on the specific thing here because I can't move off the general until that specific project is done. In other words, uh, Given that there are multiple layers of the atmosphere, how do you know when you, what, when would you you're seeing what layer of atmosphere you're looking at? Um, how do you know that uh, something else is not occurring? There are other me mechanisms that are possibly causing uh, the uh, events that go on, go on in the sky. The activity. How do you know that activity is not specifically local? Or is it global, or is it a mixture of both? And this is sort of uh, uh, kind of where I sort of uh, need all these different views. And now that I've found all these views, I've got to sort of see, okay, now, you know, what instruments are they using, how they use them? Uh, I've got to match it up with uh, on a consistent basis. I got, I got to get. With, I've <clears throat> now that I have these views, I have to uh, match up what I'm seeing on all four level uh, on all these different levels. They're basically four different views. So on these four different views, I have to match up all the all, everything that I'm seeing of okay, this is occurring here, this is occurring there. And uh I'm gonna have to do that because I just got the the sort of the fourth view. Uh just uh not even two weeks ago. I realized okay this is an important view. I had it before but I didn't really look at it carefully. And then I started looking at more carefully. Realized as I zoomed in that there was more information that I just didn't see because I hadn't zoomed in. I hadn't sort of uh, gone in cl gone in closer to the picture. And once I saw, oh. once I was able to zoom in and sort of see the uh, finer activity that sort of disappeared as you were zoomed out, uh, things appeared that I didn't expect to appear, and. Um, this gives me some new insight into how I might have to go about redoing uh, some of the observations I've already done and considering what was going on at a local level uh, as compared to uh, what the influences on the global levels are. In other words, you have a system coming in, a larger system coming in. It came up from, it would come up from Mexico, right? Using that track up the Ohio Valley. And you would see, okay, well, how does this affect the local weather? And right now, what's happening is, is we've got uh, another system again coming up from coming up from uh, uh, from Mexico to the uh, through the uh, Ohio Valley. There, it's it, there's that diagonal is there again. It sort of reappeared. It is not part of. Uh, Specifically, part of a vortex. It's not being necessarily pulled. It looks like it's moving in the direction, but it's not necessarily being pulled in the direction. It's not caught in that vortex wheel the way it had been the week before. Uh, this one it seems to be brand new. It, it just kind of popped up, ooh, I would say, uh, not even 12 hours ago. So it has to be followed. And what I noticed, that system seems to be interacting with. On a larger, again, on this larger scale, with the Hurricane Matthew and, and Hurricane Nicole coming in. In other words, these two that are coming in like this, one is here on the Ohio Valley, one is coming up, up off the, the Florida, is creating a pressure zone, is squeezing where Ontario is. And what you see is you see uh, a rise in the uh, uh, sort of moisture barrier, the, the number amount of uh, uh, water vapor in the air. Uh, seems to go up, even even though you should be having clearing, clear skies. Uh, and I went out here and looked. There are, there's not clear skies because you can't see stars that well. There are high there are high level clouds that you just don't see 
and they're kind of blocking out uh, the starlight. Sometimes the starlight will, starlight will peek, peek through and you got something, but more often than not, uh, there's a cloud layer there, uh, and so it, it matches up what I, what I see on the satellite. And the thing is, sometimes you see little wisps of things coming off of Lake, uh, Lake Ontario. On, on, the, on the eastern edge of Lake Ontario, you'll see a wisp of stuff coming off of there. And you'll see that it's traveling in the direction that the wind is going blowing in. So in other words, you're out here, I've got, I actually have, uh, on my uh, outdoor office here, I have the feed from the satellite, so I can actually look at, uh, look at it out here as I'm out here. And um, worked out pretty well, so... Uh, Happy with that. Uh, I'm gonna be f in a few minutes and be f filming the next, uh, 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 the ne the first segment, uh, the first part of uh, the OR vlog, and I'll be going into a little bit more detail into what we're looking at and some of the more the some of the physics. So this is gonna be more general here. The more specific is gonna be in the OR vlog, and I'll also probably be putting in some graphics and. Uh, a number of things like that. <laughs> uh, anyways, I said things are going pretty well. I'm going to leave this here for now. And I will see you in the uh, next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory. I was BTS. And we're trying, I said, I'm trying to do more vlogging, but we'll see what ends up happening, how it ends up working out. Democratic Earth. Earth.